initiate that inspiration and beach into the follower. Uh, or he might be a flat out full blown Sahajya. So he might initiate some kind of Sahajya beach, like the uh, Neo um, Jatagosani beach, or the Neo Kartabhaja beach, and the Kartabhaja Sahajya sect, which the current Ritviks are without their knowledge following. That's the Hajiya sect of the 13. Uh, that Kartabhaja had the principle that once their, their guru left, then no more gurus after that. So every new person coming is initiated by a guru who no longer is physically manifest, but that was never Prabhupada's teachings. That's not the Vedic teachings. That's not the Vaishnava teachings. That's the Sahajiya teaching. But in the current and postmodern context, it's a neo sahaja and it's neo kartabhaja. Uh, so you can have the Jata Gosani where the person says, I'm guru. Remember, a Gosvami, a genuine Gosvami, what is a genuine Gosvami? Vacha Vegam, Manasaha Kroda Vegam, Jiva Vegam, Udara Pasta Vegam, Etan Vegam, Yogi Shaheta Thiraha. Sarvam Apiman Pritiving Sashishya. Thiraha. Thiraha means undisturbed. Viraha means Brahma realized. Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Nasochati Nakanshati Samahat Sarvesha Bhuteshu Mud Bhaktim Levate Param. That the Guru, he is Brahma Bhuta because Nasochati, he never laments about anything. Nakanshati, he never hankers for anything. And Samatvam, he sees everybody Panditaha Samadarshanaha. He's a Pandit. He's a very learned man because he sees everybody equal. And what does he attain? Oh, my bhakti lavhate param. It doesn't say lavhate, it doesn't use the future. It says lavhate, present. My bhakti lavhate param. Param means best. Mad bhakti, para bhakti. A Brahma Bhutta realized guru. He's on the plane of realizing his constitutional position. Shrotriyam Brahmanishtam. He's Brahmanisht. He's Nishta. He's firmly fixed in the absolute truth. Why? Because he's heard properly. Shrotriyam. So that kind of guru, he isn't Mahabhagavad yet, but he's on a high platform. He's not going to change the teachings, and he can be empowered to give the bhakti lata beach, because he has mud bhakti lafate param. What to speak of the Mahabharata? The, there was um, an explanation, not from Prabhupada, from, uh, probably from the Gaudiya Mutt side, when something like this. Actually, there's three types of gurus. Um, one, both feet are in the spiritual sky. The other, one foot's in the spiritual sky, one foot's in the material world. And then the third kind, both feet are in the material world, but his vision is on the spiritual sky. I can explain that, but if I explain that, I give confidential knowledge. <laughs> I'm willing to <laughs> we do can, it. We can edit it out. If we... I'm willing to do it. But the fact is, is that if I explain it, I give very confidential knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because what's going on now is due to bewilderment. And if you're bewildered, you've got no business being guru. And if you have the audacity to be guru while you're still bewildered, then why should I unbewilder you? That can be explained. It can be explained very specifically. And I don't even want to give too many hints of how, if I give a hint, I might give it away. The point of the matter is that I'm willing to explain it. But what I'm saying now is that Guru cannot have an art. Do we agree on that? Yes. So, Guru cannot have an art. If there's any anartha, there's not guru. But what was Prabhupada's standard? Did Prabhupada say, GBC, you appoint gurus. GBC, you veto gurus. GBC, no three black balls have a vote. You can vote in gurus. Did Prabhupada ever give this? No. Why did he never give it? Because he can't give it. He can't give it. Just like he can't say that Lord Shiva is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he can say that Lord Shiva is the Supreme Personality of Servitor Godhead. But he can't say that Lord Shiva is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Ishvara, Parama, Krishna. 
Lord Shiva is a great, great Ishvara, therefore he's called Maheshvara, far, 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 far superior to the Jiva Tattva that are conditioned in the material world. Lord Shiva is a combination of the stupefying energy of the personality of Godhead, meaning the Tamaguna. He has a portion of the plenary power of Godhead within him. In other words, he is part God. And he has a little bit of Jiva Tattva in him also. It's very difficult to understand, but what isn't when it comes to the spiritual sky? The point is, is that the Guru cannot do certain things. He cannot say certain things. Certainly Lord Shiva is a Guru, otherwise how does he lead a Sampradaya? Similarly, as Divine Grace through the Prabhupada, Sampradaya Acharya, topmost Mahabhagava Guru, but there's certain things he can't do, and there's certain things he can't say, because he's not God. He can't change the Absolute Truth. He can deliver it, but he can't change it. So he is not going to say that, oh yes, in my organization, Guru is determined by votes of the Commission. And I empower a Commission of Conditioned Souls to have the intrinsic power and value of a self-corrective mechanism that's absolute. He cannot do this. He cannot say this. He cannot give it. He would not give it. Because Conditioned Soul means that if you give that, then there's no free will anymore. Yes. Yeah. Well, let me ask this question. Um, it, it's a big question. Let's see where it goes. What should have happened? In in, in we we know in November of 1977, Srila Prabhupada left this material world. Um, a lot has happened since then. A lot of controversy. A lot of intrigue. Um, looking back now, uh, what, what should have happened? given your understanding of Srila Prabhupada's teachings? Well, the answer is twofold, because the train runs on two tracks here. First of all, what should have happened is Prabhupada should have never left. That's what should have happened. Prabhupada leaving means something wrong. And now I go into great detail on that. It's going to be difficult for the audience. So we're going to leave it at that. Prabhupada's movement had to be in the hands of honest men for it to succeed. Honest, we've discussed something already about honesty, sincerity, sincere, sincere, honest. If you're sincere, you know where you're at. Now, we're meant to improve from where we're at. That's the whole thing. Constant tests. Human life means constant tests. You constantly pass the tests. When you constantly pass the tests, where you were at yesterday changes. You go higher. You become more advanced. That's the whole meaning. That's the whole meaning of human life. That's the whole meaning of progressive human life. That's the proper application of the adjective progressive. The progressive materialism invariably gravitates towards permissiveness. Progressive spiritual life means to advance yourself in spiritual knowledge, spiritual power, svabhava improves to the sattva guna, and then goes towards shuddha sattva until it reaches shuddha sattva. So honest men were required to be the leaders. If the leaders were not honest, there's no possibility of a good result. So honest means you know where you're at. So therefore, why did Prabhupada say on May 28, 1977, regular guru, that's all? Why did he say that? Why in April, just one month previous in Bombay, when one of his secretaries said to him, none of us are self-realized, and Prabhupada said, yes. We cannot be guru, the secretary said, very clearly. We cannot be guru because we're not self-realized. Prabhupada said, yes. And then Prabhupada said in May of 77, regular guru, that's all. But by my order, become guru. Yaridege Taika Krishna Upadesh. Just say what I say. Say what I've given you, repeat, spread the Krishna Upadesh as it is. 